Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another edition of the Opposition Preview. First things first, guys, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe if you're new around here, all of that good stuff. And as always, leave your thoughts in the comments. Burn after a convincing win against Aston Villa on Sunday, Chelsea are swiftly back in action with a trip down to St. Mary's, where we, when we last visited, we did actually lose. So, in fact, Samantha did a double over us when they were last in the Premier League. So we are, we are due a win uh, against the Saints. Not going to be an easy game. There's no easy games in the Premier League, but with the momentum we're building, I would hope that we would have enough to to get the job done and get another three points on the board. But delighted to be joined by Southampton fan Mike from the Match Day Vlogs channel. Mate, uh, great to catch up again as always. You're back in the Premier League now, which is fantastic. Good season last season going up through the playoffs. Um, I'm sure Southampton fan, fans expected it to be a little bit of a struggle, but one win all season, bottom of the table with five points from 13 games. Has it gone worse than you thought? Uh, short answer, yes. I would say it, it has gone worse. But I think the it's no surprise it was going to be tough. I mean, we had a lot of players who came in over the summer on the permanent deal, such as Flynn Downs and Taylor Howard bellis who were with us in the championship. So, you know, we spent 50 million quid just to stay in a, in a constant state. Um, the gap between the championship and the Premier League is, is big, and I, I had no idea quite how big it was until uh, the last few weeks to be quite honest with you but um, but yeah it's no surprise it was going to be tough also Russell Martin never you know managed in the Premier League before you know hardly really had that much of a stint in in the championship so it, it was no surprise really but I think it's it's okay it's okay it's not as bad as I think our points tally show so yeah no for sure I mean Talk to me about Russell Martin. Obviously, you know, he come in, um, you know, done a good job in the championship last season. Has, has got a bit of a reputation for playing a kind of an expansive brand of football, likes to play out from the back. We saw obviously against Liverpool recently that that kind of cost you a goal, um, you know, maybe a game that you should have at least got a point out of. Arguably mm -hmm. could have won if you were given another penalty, which you should have been given, etc. cetera. But um, mm -hmm. th there was talk earlier in the season about him maybe being one of the first managers to be sacked. Obviously, he wasn't, but... What's the feeling around Russell Martin at Southampton at the moment? And is his job in a in a dangerous position or is he is he quite safe at the moment? It's kind of mixed. I think the, the club have come out and backed him tremendously, um, you know, much to the approval and disapproval of, of the fan base, really. I think it's probably a bit more uh, in favour of him being given the boot from the fan base now, if I'm being completely honest with you. Um, that has swayed sort of back and forth based on results, as it naturally does with football fans. But... You know, the, the, the club have backed him and, and they gave him a three-year deal um, before the season kicked off, which I was quite surprised at, if I'm completely honest, because I'm thinking like, OK, he's done the job, got us back into the Premier League. Hardly convincing in the championship. I mean, it was an incredibly tough championship last season with the points tallies being ridiculously high and the fact that, you know, Leeds missed out on, you know, with their with what they accumulated in the season was, was a big shock in itself, really. So... Um, I think the fan base is, is definitely divided and probably sort of sway more for him being moved on. But I think the club's in a difficult position because they built a team around him and they built a team of players that are really playing for his system. And, you know, yes, it it does look quite ugly at times where we're trying to play out from the back and get found out. I mean, the, the goals that we've conceded in that manner have just been atrocious and um, been quite avoidable. And I think we... We certainly felt that last time at, at home against Liverpool, where we effectively just gifted them the win. Um, they weren't Liverpool weren't quite on the ball, and they weren't really playing their fully strength, full strength side um, from the off. But I do feel that was a that was a massive missed opportunity. But um, but yeah, the the fan base is definitely divided on Russell Martin at the moment. I know this might be a tricky question, but if you had to take a bit of a guess now, do you think he lasts the season? I think. We'll know by the end of the Christmas run. I think that will be... I mean, the, the club are desperate to stay in the Premier League. It has massive financial implications. I originally started the season thinking, like, they'll stick with them no matter what. You know, even if they they've finished ridiculously low points tally, you know, they're going with the ethos of, of what he believes in. And But the, the more I look at it, the more I hear things, I'm thinking, like, they'll, they'll have to make a decision at some stage because ultimately the, the goal is to be in the Premier League. The financial implications of not being in the Premier League are devastating. Um, and, and really, it's... Uh, you know, we, we could sort of plan to be a bit, a bit of a yo-yo club for a couple of years, but to establish yourself in the Premier League 
um, and the likes that you know the Brentford have and the likes that Brighton have, which has surprised quite a few. But you know, look, you're in a Premier League based on merit, not down to the history of your badge. And you know, people need to get over that and just focus on the points of that you know you're there because you deserve to be there, and and ultimately the points reflect otherwise at the moment. I mean, talk to me about some of the players that, that have come in in the summer. Obviously, you did spend some money. Harwood Bellis, who I think is actually a good player, scored in his England mm. debut in the recent international break. Um, obviously, that move from Southampton, uh, from Man City to become permanent in the summer. Flynn Downs came in. Uh, is Tyler Dibbling, was he a summer signing? No, Tyler Dibbling has been with us. Oh, he's been with you already? Time. Yeah, because yeah, he, yeah. yeah, he was with us. Then he, he come to us, didn't he, or something? And then he went, obviously gone back to you guys. He's, he's doing very well. Um and obviously, Aaron Ramsdale come in as well, probably the most high, high profile of the signings. Mm-hmm. Just briefly, how have how have the summer signings done? Have, have any kind of impressed you? I think a lot have impressed me, to be honest with you. I mean, the the likes of Flynn Downs and Taylor Harlow Bears were massive for us last season, so it's not really something that you know any of us were, were particularly surprised about. Um, Mateus Fernandez was a, was a great signing um, for us, sort of in that attacking midfield role. Um, the likes of Tyler Dibbling have, have surprised quite a few because we saw him, I mean, I've been watching him in the under-18s and the under-21s for, for many a season and, you know, was devastated when he went to you guys um, for that short period um, and then sort of came back over. He is actually a Chelsea fan, so I think he was always his boyhood dream to, to play for his uh, beloved Chelsea. But um, but naturally, I mean, he's setting the, the, you know, opinions on fire at the moment because, you know, the surprise for us was the fact that he was playing first team football and being given that amount of time. That was a big question at the start of the season. Like, is he going to get minutes on the pitch? Is he going to be able to do it? And um, yeah, he's, he's done it in absolute abundance. Uh, we also had Shigawara come in in the right back position. Um, he was brought in as a replacement for Carl Walker Peters, who's on the final year of his contract. So Carl Walker Peters never actually found a move. So we ended up with, with the two players in the side. So it's it's something that. I think if I was to rate our transfer with it, it would be probably quite a high one, really, because you know, ultimately getting the likes of Aaron Ramsdale in, which is which is massive for us. He's currently off injured at the moment due to injuring his finger in the in the game against Wolves. He actually bashed into a centre back ten minutes into the game, but played the whole game with a broken finger, which um, fair. fair play to him. But you know, the the players, I haven't got any problem with with any of the players because you know, I've had, I've had the good fortune of speaking to quite a few one on one, and and they they they're just so focused. And they're like, no matter what, I mean, even Aaron Ramstone, just like, you know, I, if I'm injured here with my finger, I'd, I'd just play number eight for the Saints. So I just want to get on and do it. So it's that passion and determination to and professionality that I think is is resonating uh, amongst the squad really. So, so that's a very positive thing. No, absolutely. Before we move on to the game itself, I wanted to chat to you about um, our boy, Leslie Uga Chukwu. Um, obviously, mm. he's joined G-Boys on loan. Um, he's only started two Premier League games. He's, I think he started all three games in the Carabao Cup. He was left out of the squad against Brighton completely. Not really an explanation given from from what I can see. He then took the uh, the step of removing all Southampton associated photos from his Instagram page. I'm not sure if those have been reinstated or not. I've not really kept across it. But what's the situation with him? Because obviously, from our perspective, he's not playing as much as we perhaps thought he was going to play. What's kind mm-hmm. of what's what's happening with that situation? I would highly expect the loan to be terminated already and he's coming back to you in, in January. That that's that's how I read it. I mean to to delete all the the content from your social media. Um but just the the fact that how he's been featured. Uh he played against Cardiff in the Cup and he looked great. He looked really, really good sort of, you know, stoic sort of midfielder commanding a presence in in the in the centre of the pitch. Um but since then he's just had a kind of few bit part players. He had a shocking first half against Bournemouth, uh, where we were sort of down three nil by half time. Um and at other kind of things where he looked a little bit lost and lost possession and, and sort of been found out really. So in my mind, I think there's been a bit of a coming together between him and Russell Martin. Perhaps he's not agreeing with the system, not liking him where he's been played and how he's been used and naturally the minutes he's been getting. So I think that's probably that really so which is devastating to see because he's clearly a quality player from from what i saw um you know from the highlights reels that that when he was playing in the chelsea shirt but also the those few moments that i saw in the in the cardiff game so yeah a bit of a disappointing one but it's something that we'll need to reinforce come january if if that is to be the case because you know we're we're definitely lacking in that midfield area especially defensive midfielders 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we saw it with Andre Santos last season when he went on loan to Nottingham Forest. He just wasn't playing. We weren't afraid, not didn't hesitate about recalling him, sending him somewhere else. Um, and I would expect if Uga Chukwu doesn't really feature too prominently over this festive period, then I think Chelsea, as you say, will probably take the exact same action. Um, moving on to the game itself. Obviously, you're at home. You put in a good performance against Liverpool last time out. Big blow, three best players, arguably suspended. Mm. Flynn Downs, Dibbling and Harwood Bellis all missing the game. Um are you worried about this one? Massively. Yeah. I think if, you, <laughs> if you'd asked me on, you know, Friday after the game and, you know, it had those players not been suspended for this fixture, I, I'd fancy us to to make it very difficult for you. Um, but that that big gap in the midfield uh, does does have me worried. I think there's a few players in, the, in our squad that have surprised quite a few. Um, the likes of Ryan Manning. You know, arguably a championship player, but has sort of done some great things defensively in sort of right back, left back positions. Um, so we do have do have sort of squad fillers in there that that could do a job, and you know perhaps it could be something that could be, you know, a, a surprise package from a from a James Bree or something like that, or you know perhaps something in midfield where we're utilising some of our more defensive players in in a higher up position. So we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But it is going to be. It's going to be a big test because it appears that you fix things at Chelsea now. So um, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, we're, we're doing all right. Just last couple of things briefly, mate. How can we expect, I mean, I've not watched Southampton an awful lot. I've watched them a little bit when they've been on TV and in, in sort of mm-hmm. big games against United, Liverpool, etc. But how can we expect, from a Chelsea perspective, how can we expect Russell Martin to sort of set the team up and approach this game? I think it was still set up um, probably on the more defensive side based on, on the players that are out. Um, but he'll set up to, I'm guessing, to go with sort of three centre-backs, but it may be tricky with the likes of uh, Howard Bellis being able to actually achieve that. So it may be something out of necessity rather than, you know, which is what we would prefer to do. Um, but Russell Martin will set up the same way he always does. He'll want to have plenty of possession. He'll want to play it out from the back um, and, and play with confidence. And a lot of the times players... They do play with a lot of confidence, but you know when it does go wrong, they can tend to shrink back a little bit. But um, but yeah, no, I don't think we'll see any changes um, from from the way that Russell Martin will set up. I mean, he set up the same way against City, same way against Arsenal, and you know managed to keep those score lines fairly low. I mean, it was only a, a goal at, at the Etihad. Um, that saw City get the the win, which was actually their yeah. last win in in long yeah, memory at the moment. It's so mad, yeah. it's. Uh, so I think you know perhaps Pep did learn a, a thing or two from Russell Martin after all, but um, but did, uh, but no, we'll, we'll we'll certainly see something set up which is on the on the side of caution. But like I said, with those players being out suspended, it's um, yeah, a bit of a worry. And just before we round out, mate, what what are your thoughts briefly on Chelsea? Obviously, we have got Romeo Lavia returning to Southampton mm. as well. Uh, last two questions on 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 him quickly. A good reception from the Southampton fans for him if he plays. I think so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've got a Saints shirt with Lavia on the on the back of it. I was a massive fan with of him, even though he was only with us for for a short period. You know, when you watch those players, well, you probably don't being a Chelsea fan, but when you're a <laughs> Southampton fan, you see those players in your lineup. You know, the likes of Virgil Van Dijk. You just think, I'm just going to appreciate this talent yeah, yeah. whilst it's here, and what will be will be. And um, you know, I don't think any Saints fan will begrudge uh, Lavia the move in the fact that the the Saints were going down to the Championship at the time, and there was an opportunity to play um, at the highest level possible, which is ultimately what he wanted to do. But he's fantastic talent. He scored against Chelsea in the last he time did. he it was played. A good it. goal as well, by the it way. That's good, yeah. And sadly, also got injured. He pulled up with a hamstring injury in the also, same game. Also so. a common theme as well. So uh... yes, yes. And I think that that's the other side of it as well, because you know we were looking at the likes of okay accumulating was it 60 million or something like that from the from the Lavia sale on a player who has a bit of an injury record so the likes of taking someone like that to the championship was would be utterly suicidal so um I don't think uh, there'll be any any booze resonating around uh, no. Some areas, although I have been surprised by quite a few times, I've been proved wrong on that. But you never. Mate, know. There's, there's always there's always a there's small always one or two of fans, yeah. like regardless of how well a player's done for the club, or whatever. There's always a small section that, for whatever reason, will just there'll be a smuttering of booze. Like there's not many players that come back to clubs, and there's a universal kind of 
you know, a, a, applause for them. But yeah, just briefly, mate, to round out your thoughts on Chelsea this season. You said, you know, at the, to- at the top, you know, you thought where things might be starting to turn about. I mean, from what you've seen of us, have you ever been impressed with what Enzo Moresca has done? Obviously, you played against his Leicester side last mm-hmm. season. Are you surprised at kind of the job that he's been able to do at Chelsea? Yes, um, would be the, the very quick answer to that one. I think he's done a fantastic job to keep so many players um, and to try and keep everyone happy in, in the squad and ultimately bring out the performances that he has. I mean, you know, we, we played his Leicester side on two occasions and conceded many goals. I don't like to use the number, but it, I think it's nine <laughs> in total. Um, but it's, it's something that... You know, he, he's found the better of us. I mean, the first time we played him at St Mary's was early in the season where Russell Martin was just kind of getting the side to gel together and trying a few things out. And it was a bit of a, a poop show, really. So I think we found out in that one. And then towards the end of the season, it was, uh, I mean, the players just down tools. They sort of resigned the fact they were going to be in the playoffs and yeah, they let in three too many more goals, really. So I think that was a 5 nil that one. But um but yeah, I, th- I think he's he's ch- clearly proven himself. I mean, he's come from the, you know, the the likes because he worked with Pep as well. So he's yeah. got that kind of philosophy, and he's. It, but I, th- I think for me, looking at Chelsea, I mean, we kind of have a revolving door of managers. That you know how how someone's going to suddenly come in and fix it, really. So um, it all things seems to be quite well, really, at the moment. So yeah, congrats to him. Yeah, no, it sort of almost feels like it's going dangerously too well at the moment but we're just we're just, we're just going to roll with it and, and, and see how we get on um last question mate a score prediction about to push you for how you think this game's going to go i know it's always hard to go against your own team do you think you can get anything from this game it's always hard to um be positive in those scenarios but i have to back my side um you know we scored two against liverpool last time out um with what we have in the resources at the moment, I'm not going to back it that far, but I'm still going to go with a positive result because we are that sort of thing on this channel. It's on brand to always back the boys. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have to go for a 1-0 home win to Southampton. Mate, you, you, you never know. Football's crazy, you know. Strange, 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 stranger things have happened. I'm going to go with us, but I think it will be... We're going to make a few changes. I think it will be a lot closer than what many people expect. I'm, I'm going to go... I think we'll I think we'll go for a 3-1 win for, for for Chelsea on this one. But yeah, we'll wait and see what happens at St. Mary's on Wednesday night. Mate, pleasure as always to catch up. Uh, if people want to check out what you do and where to find it, let them know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's Match Day Vlogs on all the formats uh, over on YouTube. We're just about to hit 50,000 followers on TikTok. So go and check us out there. Um, but yeah, it's Match Day Vlogs basically everywhere. So come find us. No, fantastic. Guys, YouTube channel will be tagged in the title, TikTok and all that stuff in the description. Make sure you head over there, follow, subscribe, show the guys some love, some great content over there. And as always, people, uh, smash the like, subscribe to the channel with your new round here, and I'll catch you again in another episode soon.